What it is, what it do? Jay Killen here with another episode of Doki Doki Rising Sun. Um, we got to the point in the mod where right before the MC was going to go home to do his homework, um, Nowski wanted to apologize for her outbursts the other um, the other day. So Cyrus is going to take us to her. So if you guys are interested to see what becomes of MC, Nowski, and Sayori, be sure to hit the like button and stick around because... We're gonna continue playing this demo. Oh, I think, well, I think I did this right, right? Okay, yeah, there you go. That's perfect. That's perfect. On our way to club room, I noticed how much that girl looks joyful. It's like a smile has been patched on her face. I guess people like that exist. Her club is in a place I've never, I've never been to the right wing. I mean, it's where all the club rooms are, so of course you've never been there, you dumbass. We're here. I was like, yeah, I've never been to this place before, because I hate people too much to want to be around in the club room section, you know? Right. Come on, man. Oh, this is nice. I've never seen the club room in this sort of lighting before. That's nice. Upon entering, I immediately recognize someone. Someone has purple hair. You don't see that often. That person is Yuri. She's in my class. Nothing more to say about her. Then by the closet, I notice something pink. That has to be Cup. I mean, that has to be Noski, the Sundere. Finally, by a teacher's desk, I see someone I didn't expect to be here. Monica is sitting there, writing something. From what I've heard about her, she should be the club president. I brought him! Well, don't have time to think anymore. All the girls are moving toward me. Kinda scary if you wanna know. <laughs> so, kinda scary if you ask me, they'll just start surrounding me. Like, like I'm some sort of weird phenomenon. Some sort of anomaly. Help. <laughs> hi, Kellan. Um, hi, Kellan. I'm the club president, Monica. Thought so. Wait. How does she know my name? Hello? And Yuri dipped. <laughs> After a brief introduction, Yuri, not seeming at ease, went back to her reading. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of rude, you're just dipped. <laughs> the other three, however, just stood there. I want to thank you for helping Natsuki. This guy's been a real pain for the, for the past months. From what I've witnessed, yeah, he looked pretty bothersome. So, thank you for helping her. Even if she seemed, even if she said some pretty harsh things. Like I said, I'm not mad at her. Then it's perfect. Hold on, I said I wanted to apologize. You're right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry for saying those things. I didn't mean them. Not much of an apology, but anyway. Like I said, don't sweat it. She baked cupcakes just for you. Sorry! You'll see, they're the best. He's like, I mean, I don't care, but all right. I take a seat. Not too, not too long after, I'm joined by Sayori. Soon followed by Monica, Natsuki, and then Yuri. As as Sayori said, Natsuki baked some cupcakes as a way to apologize. You can eat as many as you want. <laughs> He's like, Whoa, Natsuki, yours is entirely pink. That's so cute. Just like you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm not cute. <laughs> they seem very close friends. And this club looks like a pleasant place to be in. Not that I care or anything. Not that it's something for me, you know. I'm the loner and the doubtner. 
<laughs> Too bad I'm fucking broken inside. It's okay, it's okay, killer. All of these girls are broken inside. You'll be right at home, actually. I'm sure I would've had fun if I were to join. I mean... Kellen, is everything all right? I was just thinking about how good this cupcake looks. I mean, I am a pro. Of course they're delicious. I'll see for myself then. Time to dig in. Oh. Holy fuck! It's good. Really good. So, how did it taste? Didn't you say that you were obviously good since you were the one to bake them? Well, I guess it's her way of saying things. It was very good. Thank you. It's not a guy! Yes, it was. I mean... I, I, under I understood what you meant, Natsuki. Don't worry. She's like, it's not like I made them for you or anything. I'm like, yes, you did. You literally made them for me as a way to apologize. You can't say it's not like I made them for you or anything, Baka. That doesn't apply in this case. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. But I gotta go now. I have homework to do. You're right. Homework is very important. I get up. Well then. I'm um, Kellen. Yes. Give me your phone number. I'll give you mine. And everyone's like, Nani? <laughs> everyone's like, Nani? <laughs> Monica's just giving out her phone number to this guy? What the? And Kellen's like, Ayo? <laughs> he said, Ayo? Ayo, 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 what? Ayo, what up? <laughs> That's the last thing I expected this guy to say. Yo, little bro, if you're watching this, Ayo, Ayo, what up? <laughs> he's like, huh? You dumbass, of course she's not talking about that. Well, you don't know that. Hey, you don't know that at all. Just be cool. You don't know what Monica has. You don't know why Monica asked you that. Maybe she wants you to join the club. Maybe she wants to get to know you better. Come on, man. Give yourself a little credit. It's something else for sure. M M Monica, what are you doing? You just met him. I think you're all getting. I think you all got the wrong idea. I was just asking for his number so that if he ever wishes to join the club, he'd have a way of contacting me. See? I don't see why I should refuse. After all, after tonight, I, I won't be calling you anyway. Here. I read my number on a piece of paper she, on, on a piece of paper she gave me. Thank you. I'll send a message later this evening. Sure. Goodbye. Bye, Kalan. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Kalan. Well, do they know it'll be the last time they see me? Just as well. I have nothing to live for anymore. And he just doesn't say anything. I lie on my bed. My mind is filled with only one thing. The knife in my the knife on my desk. I think about the way to do it. Should I stab myself until I die? Or just slit my throat for a quick death? There are countless ways to die. I should just pick the fastest one. Slitting my throat. I'll go with it. Only thing that's left is to build the courage to do it. I know it sounds weird after all I just thought about. But I'm still scared to die. I'm such a moron. He's having second thoughts. 
good. You should have second thoughts about this. He's like, oh, nobody will miss me. Oh, nobody cares about me. I can name five people right now that actually seem to like you as a person and find you quite interesting. Orimoto, Yuri, Natsuki, Monica, and Sayori. You have five girls right there who seem to think you're worth talking to. You should at least give them a chance. Five people are better than no people. <sighs> I've been doing nothing for four hours now. Grow some balls, man. Just take the knife, put it deep into your throat. Easy, right? All you need to do is get your ass up. I stand up. Uh-oh. Take the blade. I hold the knife with my right hand. Get it close to your throat. I feel the cold of the steel on my skin. It's a strange feeling. I'm about to end my life. But all I could do is think about how cold this thing is. Others would have thought about their family, or their friends, or their pet. Anything but the temperature of an object. My heart is beating like crazy. I feel the adrenaline rushing through my veins. That's it. I can do it now. My skin is now touching the sharp side. I feel something warm in my hand, but in a bit of pain on my neck. There it is. <laughs> I breathe in one last time, and then... Well, guys, thank you for playing uh, Doki Doki Rising Sun. A few hours earlier. Goodbye, Killin. Right after Yuri said goodbye, he left the club room. Oh, this is oh, this is Natsuki's point of view. I somehow managed to apologize, even though it clearly didn't so didn't sound like one. But I'm glad anyway. I'm glad I got to say sorry to someone. I feel like I've been a dick to everyone around me recently, especially around Monica. I snap at her every now and then. I was like this before. Don't get me wrong, but it's been happening more and more frequently. And that's because of that jerk. Just leave me alone, for fuck's sake. I already have enough problems at home. I can't deal with more of this shit. Are you good, Natsuki? You look kind of... mad. It's nothing. Natsuki? Why are the other two... Sai looks serious, the other two are just sitting there smiling. That doesn't make any sense. Why would they be reacting to what Sayori and Natsuki are doing? I was just thinking about what I said to him. He just trying to help me. I shouldn't have snapped at him. Snaped. I should have snaped at him. So you know what? I'll give I'll give all my thoughts and opinions at the end of the devil. I'm just gonna play through it as it is. So I'm not I'm not gonna be too harsh for now. As long as you realize that it's fine, Natsuki. We all make mistakes, you know. I know, but... I want you to promise me one thing. Which is... That you won't insult someone that doesn't deserve it ever again. That's a hard promise to keep, Sayori. That doesn't deserve it? Let's say... That guy, if he ever comes up to you again... You can calmly tell him to fuck off! <laughs> Hey yo, hey yo, Sayori dropping the f bombs, bro. <laughs> Let's get it, Sayori. I didn't know you could swear, Sayori. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, me neither. What's happening to me? <laughs> they all just start laughing. I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> yo, Sayori becoming edgy. 
Uh, thanks, guys. And don't worry, Sayori. I won't insult someone ever again. At least, I will try my best. Natsuki! I'm joking, I'm joking. But in all seriousness, I'll work on it. That's all I wanted to hear. With that in mind, we can all resume our club activities. Great idea. Sure. I don't mind. Yuri just doing absolutely nothing. Having the characteristics of a plank of wood. For all intents and purposes of the story. Monica having said that... Oh, Monica having said that, we, we prepare to share our poems. Well, I guess that was a nice little interlude. We got to see a little more of the girls interacting with each other. A few min minutes later. I'm guessing this is Yuri's point of view because it's the purple text box. Thank you, Sayori. We just finished sharing poems. I can't help but think about, Nats about Natsuki's poem. I also I also like the fact that they that the mod creator put up um I think it was Elkra. I like the fact that Elkra put up where where Yuri said thank you Sayori, and it put up her name so we know this is Yuri talking. I like that. It was sort of different than usual, as if she were was enraged when she wrote it. She used some pretty harsh words, and there wasn't any meaning in her text. So she was just venting. That's basically what you're talking about. She was venting in paper. She was venting in writing form. Just pure anger and hatred. It worries me. Yuri? We aren't very close, but I still worry that something might be wrong. Well, you're not wrong about that, Yuri. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. I should ask her. I should check on her. To see if everything is fine. Yuri! But what if she gets angry? What if she gets mad that I brought into her life? Yuri? She might even think that I'm doing it purely out of politeness. That I don't care about her, but say otherwise. Which is not the case. She's my friend. Are you alright, Yuri? Even though we argue about this or that, I care about her. She's one of my the only friends I have, and I don't want to lose her because I said something inappropriate. But then again, what if there really is something wrong? She might be upset that I didn't notice, and therefore didn't ask her about that. But then, what if- Yuri! Ah! He's like, Yuri! Oh! I'm s sorry. I'm sorry, did I scare you? N no, it's okay. She kind of did. You looked like you were thinking really hard. Is everything alright? Yes, do not worry about me. I like, you know, it's pretty annoying because they all want, they all want to help each other out, but as soon as someone comes to, to want to help them out, they're like, oh no, don't worry about me, I'm fine, don't talk to me. I'm like, so you want to help each other out, but you don't want to talk to each other to help each other out? You can't exactly help each other out if you don't talk to each other. Something's, something's gotta give. You know? You gotta do something different here if you want things to change. Yuri, you remember what we talked about last time? If you want to tell us something, say it. We won't judge you. Take your time, if you have to. You're right. I took deep breaths to calm down. She's right. I should just speak my mind. Like everyone does. But... I can't help but feel anxious around others. What if I say something wrong? What if I stutter mid-sentence? They will make fun of me. And I don't want it. I know Mark and the other girls won't, but... I'm so used to it by now. To overthink about my words. To overthink about other people's reactions. To overanalyze every single situation I am. Like I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> to overanalyze every single situation. Oh, you mean like how you're doing right now, Yuri? And because of that, I lose all my means. I don't know what to say anymore. 
which makes you even more anxious. And so on. Always what if. Always. Um, Yuri? Hmm? Is somebody talking to me? Eek! I'm so, I'm so sorry, Monica. I spaced out. Again? Like I said, take your time. It's okay. I will say this. That they seem to do a good job about portraying Yuri's anxiety over talking to other people. And this seems to be like at a point in time where everyone like just started meeting each other. So the girls aren't at... But then again, based... But then I can't even say that because I want to say this seems to be the point in time when the girls are like just getting to know each other. So they're not really comfortable around each other yet. But then earlier, the MC said that like, oh, well, they all seem like close friends. But I guess that was just like on the surface, maybe? I don't know. Because you think if they're like closer friends with each other, that their insecurities aside, they'd be a bit more comfortable with each other. So it seems like um, the mod creator is trying to balance portraying their each of their own insecurities and their own demons that they need to work through with establishing a healthy relationship between all the girls. But then you would believe that them having healthy relationships would kind of help balance out their insecurities. So... I don't know, it seems... It, it seems like... He want. It seems like the mod creator wants two things to happen at the same time, but they're not quite meshing that well. So I, I think if he was going to do this way, I think it would work better as if the girls didn't have that great of a relationship. That way, all of their insecurities and their demons could take center stage. And then it will be better for everyone to work through them together, and then they grow closer because of that. Similar to like how it happened in um Blue Sky... Blue Skies Yuri route. I think if the bot creator took that kind of approach, it would make things a bit better. But that's just my opinion. I was thinking about Natsuki, actually. I found her acting quite differently than usual. As if something was bothering her, besides the bullying. She's not the type to be down just because of something like that. So you know this too. Too. Siren came to me a while. Siren came to me while we were sharing poems. She too, she too thought that Natsuki was behaving strangely. I see. And I was thinking of asking about it, but I don't think you asking her is the right thing to do. What do you mean? You two are polar opposites. I think she would just get more upset more than anything else. This is why I should be the one asking her. You're right. That's kind of, that's kind of upsetting though, because Yuri wants to be Yuri wants to be her friend, you know. And Monica's like, yeah, you don't need to be talking to her, okay? Let me talk to her. That's kind of insensitive of Monica. Monica didn't really pay attention to Yuri's feelings. Then again, Monica doesn't really know Yuri's feelings. But as a club president, it's your job to facilitate the emotions of the people around you and to understand how people are feeling and to create an environment where people should be feel freer to express how they feel through and through. I'm learning more about this in my current job right now, so... so yeah, I guess yeah, it's interesting to see it in, um, in, visu in visual media. And Monica's like, ah, I'm being a jackass? Ah, uh, excuse me, Yuri, that came out pretty bad. There's a need to apologize, Monica. I understood what you meant. In fact, I am thankful for that. That way, I won't mess anything up. <laughs> you wanna have- Wait, whoa, everybody's dropping F-bombs now, bro. First Sayori, now Monica. I wouldn't expect Mon I thought Monica would be too proper to do this, but okay. You wouldn't have fucked up, Yuri, believe me. <laughs> and they're both like, oh, okay. I think this is a thing. Anyway, I'll go talk to her. 
There are still... She, che she checks her phone. Ten minutes left until the club ends. That should be enough to... Sorry, I gotta go home. Uh-huh, but we still have time. I know, but I gotta be home soon. And I kind of forgot to tell you with all that's been happening. Um, don't, don't worry, Natsuki. Do you have any free time soon? I'm free tomorrow afternoon. Why is that? Is it wrong? Is it wrong to spend time with your friends? All right, I'll let you know. Bye. Bye, Natsuki. Goodbye, Natsuki. Bye, Na. Oh, bye, Nat. <laughs> Jesus, that scared me. Turn the volume down, Sayori. I'll show as loud as I want. If you keep screaming like this, you won't get any cupcakes next time. Hey, Mini. Excuse me. What did you say? I said goodbye, and I love you and your cupcakes. That's better. Well then. Too bad, um, too bad she had to leave this early. She even threatened to starve me. Sorry we the peers next to Monica. You kind of deserve that. Here? Yeah? Why is everyone against me? In a sense, she is right. Even you, Yuri? <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> Club, um, clubs are gonna end soon. You can leave now if you want. Alright, I'll be going then. Bye! I like how they kind of exaggerate so they exaggerate so the Sayori's more um flamboyantly cheerful characteristics. They made her a lot more girly this time around, which is nothing wrong with that. Sorry, Sayori, Sayori, Sayori in my opinion is probably like the girliest the girliest of the four, so that makes sense. What about you, Yuri? I think I will stay until the end. Alrighty. So now we're going to see things from Sayori's point of view? Oh, this is from Monica's point of view. A few minutes later... This is just really weird. We went from the MC uh, going to do the deed to now we're just changing perspectives with the girls because reasons, I guess. I mean, I su well, you know what? I suppose this is to establish the things that are wrong with each of the girls. I guess, I guess, I guess that's what this is. I guess that's what this is for. But at the same time, I'm like, it just feels kind of odd. Because, like, the pacing is weird. Because, like, oh, well, I don't know where to put establishing the, the problems that the girls have. I know. We'll just put it here after the cliffhanger with the MC. Because we don't know what happened to him. Which, I mean, I've seen other things do it before, right? So it's not like this is anything different from the norm. It's just like, I don't know. Maybe you could have found a way to make it more organic into the story, but I guess if you're going to do it this way, then I suppose it makes sense. Like, doing the cliffhanger, just to fill in, fill in the gaps. It's like the filler arc, I guess, you know. day. See you tomorrow, Monica. Bye, Yuri. Yuri being the last to leave. I'm the only one left. I'm exhausted. At least Natsuki ought to apologize. But... I don't know. Just like Yuri said, she's behaving differently. She's getting mad more often. She snapped at me for the smallest things. Or she snaps at me for the smallest thing. We'll see tomorrow. I should leave now and focus on homework. 
Even though that's the last thing I want to do right now. I feel that, Monica. I really do. So you see Monica's stressed. Oh, this is Monica's room. This is a cute room that Monica has. I could dig it, as the kids would say. So I wonder what Monica's problems are in this mod. <sighs> that should be enough. The history assignment took an eternity to finish. I haven't did that biology thing that was due in three weeks. It's past 7 p.m. Oh, now we get p.m.s in here. It was all a.m.s with it was all a.m.s with Killer, but now we get some p.m.s up in here. Look on the bright side. Now I'm free to do whatever I want, which is nothing. My parents won't be home for another four days. I should show while I can. I guess I'll just study a bit more, to be sure. Oh great, I have all this free time! What am I gonna do? Study. It's now past 9.30pm. Just a bit more, by the way. I wasted one day of rest. I really should learn how to take it easy. I even haven't had dinner yet. And I'm sitting at my desk, working my ass off. <laughs> See? Even my stomach agrees that I work way too much. The girls have told me this before. That I should rest more. Oh, so Monica's a workaholic who doesn't understand work-life balance. And that I shouldn't push myself too hard. This is basically blue skies. That's what I'm thinking about now. The, the, the more I think about it, this is like blue skies. But the MC has depression. <laughs> like, Monica's a workaholic who wants to be perfect by any means. Yuri's dealing with uh, anxiety issues and self confidence issues. Noski's dealing with issues with her dad. But now, this time, Noski has a bully to deal with, in addition to dealing with issues with her dad. And Sayori, who I'm sure we'll get to, is dealing with her depression because that's Sayori's thing. But it's what I've always known. My parents are like this. They raised me like this. They want me to be a hardworking person. And I don't want to betray their expectations. But the thing is, Monica, it's your life to live, not, not your parents' life to live. Your parents are already living their lives, but you have to live your life and find out what you want to do and who you want to be. And that's the hardest thing for young people, is because... We get so caught up in what other people want from us. We never get a chance to learn what we want for ourselves. Until it's like way too late and we're already stuck in our ways. And then we end up um, regretting and begrudging ourselves for not f ever finding out who we are and who we want to be. And that's just sad, man. But sometimes it's just too much. All the stress coming from the those expectations... I'm used to it, but like I said, sometimes I can't handle it, and I disappoint them, which makes me stress even more. You had this dozens of times, Monica, don't let it get to yourself. I should need something. There were some leftovers from yesterday. And my laziness was at its peak. It was pretty tasty. But not as good as a real meal. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I glance at the clock. 10.07pm? Uh, Time to go to bed. I can't help but think I forgot something. But I can't figure out what exactly. Reflection noises? What's a reflection noise? In text reflection noises? What is she stretching or something? I was like, what is this? No? Oh, she's like, hmm. Hmm. 
No, I can't find what it is. Hmm? I forgot to text him! Ah! Monica, you fucking Sayori! Wait, what? <laughs> did, she, did Monica just use Sayori as a verb? No, no, not a verb. A noun. She used Sayori as a noun. Wow. That's crazy, bro. Also, Monica dropping F bombs is something I'm not used to. I guess they're really trying to, like, pr like, casualize. Whoever made this is really trying to, like, like, depestalize Monica, I think. You were supposed to message him this evening. How could you have missed that? Well, Monica, you were busy doing other stuff. You were studying. You were doing history homework. You were doing biology homework. That was due in three weeks. You were studying just to be sure of things you probably already knew anyway. You had a lot going on, Monica. It was your duty as club president. Wait, I can still text him now. No, he might be asleep. Well, and if I don't send it, he might think I forgot about him. Which is the case. Ah, oh, what should I do? Just text him? Wait a second. If I send it now, he could always reply tomorrow. Yeah! You're such a genius, Monica. You're such a genius, Monica, you know that? Also, talking about myself in the third person, I've really gone insane. I take out my phone and send him a message. It'd be funny if I, right before he's about to, right before he's about to, like, slit his throat, he hears his phone ring, he's like, ah, Who, who this? At the same time. Oh, do, do, do we flash back to the MC? We do. I, I knew it. I was like, I knew it. I figured as he's about to slit his throat, his phone goes off, and he's like, ah. I breathe one last time. And then, ah! I let go of the knife. What? What the? Uh? Why? Why now? I had it in me. I was this close to finally ending it. So why? 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 I break down. The tears don't stop flowing, and they probably won't. I was this close to ending myself. I wanted to die, yet I'm glad to be alive. I don't understand. Why is it a relief that I didn't die? Because there's a part of you that wants to live, and there's a part of you that wants bigger things for yourself than to end your life too early. Because you're being sad. So go out there, MC. Live your life. Go do something. Be somebody. Why are my mind and body not thinking alike? I don't understand. I don't understand anything. I don't know what to do anymore. My body wants to live, but I'm dead inside. I have nothing to look forward to. Nothing worth living for. Yet I'm glad not to be dead. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know! I don't... I don't know, I think... I think we might make a breakthrough here. Really? Surely I do. I think you might be getting somewhere. Now he's starting to ask, like Uncle Iroh said, it's time to look inward and start asking yourself the big questions. I've been crying for the past 20 minutes. My eyes are fucking dry. And my mind is a complete wreck. The knife is just next to me. I want to take it. I want to finish the job. My body won't listen to me. I can't move. I can't fucking move. I can feel my consciousness fade away. I'm exhausted. The adrenaline levels seem to have gone down. 
I can't do anything, except waiting for my body to go off. As usual, I'm not the one making decisions. So fucking annoying. Yo, know, dude, you need to chill with the ellipses, fam. You put in like a, cu a couple of ellipses too many. Not just this, this is. Every time you put ellipses, you put like a couple too many, man. You make these pauses like way too drawn out. My hands are shaking. I can't even stand up. My alarm clock shows me a familiar sight 4 12 a.m. It's 4.30 a.m. on a Tuesday. Does it get much worse than this? Let me know if you get that reference. Very funny. Back to square one, it seems. <sighs> Why did I stop? I was determined to do it. So why? Your phone went off, you got scared. My phone. It rang and scared me. Made me drop the knife. I decide to check it. Unknown number? Oh, Monica. She was supposed to text me. Monica was the one to save my life. What's left of a life, that is. I'll reply later. I think I said I'll replay later. Alright, well. I think this is as good a place as any to wrap up this episode. Um, a lot has happened this episode. Very eventful. I need to think about what I'll. I think I need to think about what I'm going to title this episode. Probably something like the Nexus or something because we're kind of getting to the we're kind of getting to like a a coalescence of everybody's issues. It's all coming together at this. It all came together this episode. We find out each of the problems that the, that these people are having and how each of these people affect one another. So I think we're we're getting somewhere here. We're making progress. And my creator, if you end up watching this, I hope you take um, I hope you take some of my my um my opinions and criticisms um forward go going forward. Just a, just some suggestions I have based on how I see these things. Maybe other people gave you suggestions while while um they've played this. So I don't know, but I'll definitely say more about how I think about some of these things as I keep playing. But that's enough for now. Um, if you guys like this episode, leave a like. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're trying to grow the family. Like, one person at a time. And, uh, it's been real. It's been fun. It's your boy, Jake Killen. Ciao for now.